Dear ladies and gentlemen, I am Oliver Bretz. I work at the Fraunhofer Institute for Large Structures in Production Engineering in Rostock, so in Germany. And I'm very happy to give this presentation about the diffusible hydrogen concentration in drawn arc stud weldments. Um, due to the limited time, I will very briefly explain the motivation, the experimental investigations and the results and findings. And I will sum up the presentation at the conclusion. And for more details, please look up the manuscript in the conference proceedings. Now let's have a look on the drawn arc stud welding. And here on the right hand, you can see a video showing the process. So in general, it's a highly efficient welding process. Um, it allows the fully mechanized welding of pin-shaped elements with a diameter up to 25 millimeter, and um, we can weld them in two seconds. And um, yeah, it's very well established in steelwork and composite construction in particular. And um, here we can see some applications, for example, um, as shear connectors on uh, bridge girders or on sheet piles. So what we know that is uh, due to the very concentrated um, energy input in stud welding, um, it is associated with high cooling rates and uh, low cooling times. So um, here on the right hand, you can see a typical microstructure in the welded region. And um, even for non-alloy construction, steels, um, especially in the weld metal region or in the heat affected zone, we can expect very high strength and um, but low ductility. And uh, this might be critical in terms of um, hydrogen assisted cracking. So in general, the evaluation of the risk of uh, hydrogen cracking is necessary when we find uh, critical boundary conditions during welding or we uh, weld susceptible high strength steels. And uh, one essential component for the evaluation is the hydrogen concentration, of course. But uh, at the moment, there's a missing knowledge base regarding the uh, process related hydrogen ingress in uh, stud welding. And further, we don't know the significance of the boundary conditions during welding, uh, which is the ambient atmosphere, the used materials and the workpiece surface condition. And um, this leads me to the next point, which is the sample welding. And for our experimental investigations, we use uh, large studs with a diameter of 20 millimeters and we use single-use uh, ceramic ferrules and uh, here you can find the important welding parameters which are basically 1.7 kilo amperes and uh, 850 milliseconds so um, this is around 45 kilojoules here on this slide you can see the experimental design and basically we varied the ambient atmosphere so we set different temperatures and different humidities or moisture contents during welding. Uh, further, we varied the materials. So we used uh, ferrules stored under different conditions and we investigated the surface uh, condition. And uh, we used, for example, uh, dry surface, moist and rusty surfaces. Now we come to the hydrogen measurement and uh, we use the carrier gas hot extraction, uh, which is the commonly applied technique for determination of hydrogen and weld joints. Um, we adapted the ISO standard to stud welding and uh, this method is um, explained in detail in this paper. But uh, to make it short, um, weld specimens are placed in an oven and um, they are heated up to 400 degrees Celsius and during a dwell time of one hour, the hydrogen evolution rate is measured 
and uh, integrate it to determine the dissolved diffusible hydrogen volume. To get the hydrogen concentration, um, we first determined the weld metal masses, but since weighting is not possible, the volumes were numerically calculated based on uh, rotation bodies and um, they are based on the actual weld metal contour in macro sections. And so we have the quasi deposit weld metal, uh, which is the green area, and um, we have the total weld metal representing the entire fused region in the sample. And now we can calculate the characteristics concentrations and um, we have the HD value representing the um, hydrogen related to the deposit weld metal. So this concentration is given in milliliters per 100 grams of um, deposit weld metal. And on the other hand, we have the concentration related to the um, total weld metal, which is the HF value, and um, this is normally given in parts per million. Now we come to the results and um, the specific hydrogen concentrations in stud weld metals are summarized in, on this slide. And um, here in this bar diagram, um, the bars represent the mean value. Um, we have the HD value in green and gray is the HF value. And the, the error indicators show the scattering um, of the individual values in one sample series. And um, deviations may occur in one series for example, because the um, determined weld metal masses are subjected to certain fluctuations that are based on the positioning of the cut plane due to non-rotationally symmetric forms, for example. Uh, but in general, the scattering is quite usual for carrier gas hot extraction methods, thus the results uh, deemed to be valid. And um, we can see that the HF value is uh, of the order of about 50% of HD. And uh, this represents the proportion of the deposit weld metal among the entire fused weld metal. Uh, this is very comparable to ordinary arc welding processes. And um, now we have a closer look on the results by focusing on the HD D values. So I reduced the diagram and um, I highlighted the essential uh, changes or variations. And um, here we can uh, we have a closer look on Weltman's in workshop um, ambient condition by using ferrules stored in a workshop environment and uh, the surface was polished and dry. And um, we used uh, ferrules stored for a long time in our workshop on the one hand and um, we used um, ferrules which were stored in a uh, climatic controlled workshop condition. And um, yeah, you can see that the weld quality is very good. And um, our findings are that uh, under practical dry conditions and workshop environment, um, with small variations in temperature and humidity, the HD value is about 3 millimeter, uh, milliliter per 100 gram with a spread of around 1. And um, even controlled atmosphere did not significantly reduce the spread. So um, therefore, uh, therefore uh, long-term non-controlled storage in typical workshop atmosphere is not critical. Uh, then we examined the, the influence of the ambient atmosphere during welding. And um, when we weld in an atmosphere with very low moisture content, 
In this case, by setting a cold, dry climate, the HD is considerably smaller. So um, the findings are that uh, the atmospheric humidity significantly affects the resulting hydrogen concentration. So uh, then we investigated the ferrule storage condition and as reference we use uh, dried ferrules and um, this leads to um, equal HD values like the workshop uh, ferrules and um, even storage under warm humid uh, conditions with a uh, high moisture content will um, only slightly increase the resulting um, hydrogen concentration. So this means uh, redrying is not reasonable if uh, ferrules were stored under typical workshop conditions. However, any contamination of the ferrules with water um, may result in poor world quality and leads to high HD. So uh, these ferrules definitely needs to be redried. And um, if there are certain concerns regarding water contamination of the ferrules, they can be modified by applying uh, hygroscopic substances to ensure um, a good weld quality and lower HD values. Lastly, we investigated the surface condition and as reference we welded on um, surfaces that were chemically cleaned and dried additionally and um, actually the resulting HD is in the same range of uh, like welding on blank surfaces so there's no benefit of additional uh, meticulously cleaning and uh, steelwork typical mechanical cleaning is sufficient. And now we can see what is the effect of a rusty or a moist surface and uh, rust is a corrosion product containing hydrous oxide and hydroxide and therefore the hydrogen offer is increased and we can find slightly higher HD values with high scattering and um, this is assumed to be uh, justified by the heterogen surface condition. Um, the last bar represents welding on a slightly moist surface and here the HD source to around 8 and uh, so findings are um, the surface condition may significantly affect the resulting uh, concentration and surface must be blank and dry. In conclusion, I'd like to sum up the main points and um, under ideal conditions we can expect around 3 milliliters per 100 gram HD. Um, the surrounding atmosphere probably least contributes to hydrogen offer um, the surfaces uh, should always be blank and free from any water residuals and regarding the ferrule storage conditions, um, water contaminated ferrules uh, constitute a significant hydrogen source, but uh, redrying is not necessary in general if uh, the ferrules are stored under typical workshop or even under warm and humid uh, atmospheric conditions. And the last point is uh, further investigations are necessary for validation of these uh, hypotheses. So thanks for your attention and now I'd be happy to answer your question if there's time. And nevertheless, um, feel free to contact me later. Thanks.